We don't know very much about outer space. It's still one of life's great mysteries. But with each passing day, we do learn more and more. These are 20 surprising facts about space you didn't know. Number 20. Do aliens really exist? It's really the golden question of our existence. Do aliens actually exist, or are we deluding ourselves into believing a lie? Obviously, there's no way for us to answer that since we don't have access to the information, so let's turn the responsibility over to the U.S. government. In June 2021, the U.S. government released a declassified report containing comprehensive information about what the U.S. government knows about UFOs. The report didn't provide any evidence of a link between more than 120 UFO sightings reported over the past two decades and a possibility that Earth may have been visited by aliens, and that disappointed a heck of a lot of people. But when questioned, several experts in fields from astrobiology to astrophysics all said they believed, without question, that there was a link and there are aliens out there. It's just that Space is a big place, it's hard to find them. So now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, I can say what I want to say. This is why humanity isn't ready to hear this yet, but I will say it here. Aliens might actually be real, and this is the honest truth. Thank you. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the juicy topic. Did you know that scientists think that one of the volcanoes on the moon could potentially destroy the moon if they became active enough? Humanity isn't ready to hear this yet, but it's the truth. We all know there's been volcanic activity on the moon in the distant past, but not for a long time. Let's hope those scientists aren't proven right. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below by using the hashtag juicy topic. Number 19. Great Red Spot. I'm pretty sure that anybody who went to high school will be able to remember their experiences with the Great Red Spot, or as I call it, severe acne. Yeah, that was a fun time for everybody, right? In this case, though, we're headed to space, so you can put down that doctor-prescribed face cream. The giant red spot, a high-pressure system located in Jupiter's southern hemisphere, is a powerful anti-cyclone that swirls counterclockwise around the planet's center. The Great Red Spot is often described as a pancake because of its shape and structure, but this cute little nickname belies the storm's velocity. This storm rages around 270 to 425 miles per hour. Scientists have tracked the Great Red Spot since the 19th century, but they don't know exactly when it formed, or how. It's commonly assumed that the Red Spot predates the earliest records, so good luck finding the truth. Okay, so basically we're looking at a consistent and very intense hurricane on the surface of Jupiter. That does not sound like a fun time. And to know that, to paraphrase Billy Joel, it was always churning since the world was turning, is pretty wild. It's also yet another reason for me to never venture into space. Number 18. Hottest Planet the solar system is vast, filled with all kinds of curious planets, each with its own unique way of life. But as we weather the climate crisis here on Earth, the universe is having its own fair share of insane climate incidents. Maybe it's time for us to venture to the solar system's hottest planet, right? Earth's average temperature is 58.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Compare that to Venus, our solar system's hottest planet, where your average day can reach temperatures of around 842 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt lead. But what's really weird is that Venus isn't even the closest planet to the Sun. While that may be the case, Venus has an atmosphere composed of so much carbon dioxide that it's beyond toxic. The atmosphere and thick clouds of sulfuric acid trap heat, causing a runaway greenhouse 
greenhouse effect. All this is to say that, uh, well, any living thing would be killed in seconds, so you can add Venus to your never-go list, I guess. In this upcoming era of space tourism, it's becoming increasingly challenging to find anywhere you could visit without instantly dying. What a fun time we're all gonna have. Number 17. Neutron Star it's one of those things we hear about all the time in sci-fi shows and movies, but does anybody actually know what a neutron star is? I doubt it. Well, rest assured, we scoured the internet looking for experts who could tell us, and they all said no, so I'll do my best to try and make sense of it. Buckle up. Neutron stars form when massive stars die in explosions. Neutron stars are incredibly dense. One teaspoon's worth would weigh as much as a billion tons, and given that each is around 12 and a half miles wide, you can imagine how heavy a whole neutron star would be. These stars have a gravity 2 billion times stronger than what we know on Earth. However, the most mind-blowing fact about neutron stars is how rapidly they spin. 43 thousand times a second, a process kick-started by the explosion that created them. Of course, that speed eventually peters out, but still, imagine being on that. The motion sickness. Ugh. So if you take nothing else away from the video, just take the knowledge that you would never, ever want to be stuck on a neutron star. The g-force alone would probably snap your neck in half a second. Pretty obvious why sci-fi writers love them, though. Big boom. Number 16. Diamond Rain Throughout history, there has been a heck of a lot of things raining from the sky here on Earth. We've had frogs, spiders, hailstones the size of golf balls, meat, space jelly. But one thing we've never had fall, diamonds. Which kinda sucks because it'd be nice to have some free jewels. Well, for that, you have to venture into space. Calculations by US scientists indicate that carbon is abundant in its dazzling crystal form in the atmosphere of both Saturn and Jupiter. What does that mean? Lightning storms can turn methane into soot. That soot falling to the surface of the planet turns into chunks of graphite and then diamond. Yes, it literally rains diamonds. Eventually, these diamond hailstones melt into a liquid ocean in the planet's hot core. The biggest diamonds to fall from the sky would be about a centimeter in diameter. That's big enough to go on a ring, but probably not something you'd want raining down on your head. Actually, when you really think about it, diamonds falling from the sky would cause untold damage to civilians and material goods. I mean, you'd have a glorious pure diamond, yeah, but you'd be all scarred and bleeding. Is that what you want? I doubt it. It's not exactly J-Lo. Number 15. Cryovolcanoes while most people think of volcanoes as spitting hot molten lava, that's really more of an Earth thing. In space, volcanoes can spew water, methane or ammonia, which then turn into frozen vapor, and volcanic snow as they erupt. This describes something called a cryovolcano, and honestly, it's not really any less terrifying than a normal volcano. Cryovolcanoes are actually pretty common. They exist on at least three different planets and moons in our solar system. Pluto, Saturn's moon Titan, and Jupiter's moons Europa and Io. In fact, in fact, Io's cryovolcanoes are extremely active. NASA's vehicles have captured the eruptions of the moon's many vents, with plumes of frozen vapor extending some 250 miles. Scientists don't know what causes cryovolcanoes, although strong gravitational pulls might be a part of the equation. It seems to be a recurring trend. All they know for sure is that you don't want to be around when it goes off. Actually, that's a solid piece of advice for any kind of volcano. You should always do your best to run in the opposite direction if you happen to be near a volcano erupting. It doesn't matter if it's magma, cryo, underwater, anything. Do yourself a favor and call an Uber. Actually, if it's erupting, it's probably too late. That guy ain't getting there in three minutes. Number 14. Galaxies Collide 
If you needed a little more existential dread in these troubling times, don't you worry, I'm here to deliver. Today we have the joy of knowing that our universe is inherently doomed. That's uh, nice, isn't it? Not like we're also not having to deal with, uh, I don't know, 60 other existential crises at any moment. Our Milky Way galaxy is a staggering 2.5 million light years away from the next nearest Andromeda, but astronomers say the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies are on a course toward a collision that ultimately results in their destruction. The galaxies are speeding toward each other at around 250 miles an hour, and when they inevitably collide, scientists say their stars will scramble and some won't survive. If that's already kinda terrifying, just know it will get better. Apparently, the two galaxies will take another billion years to finally create a new unrecognizable form, but rest easy. This isn't due to happen for another four billion years. So, no, you don't have to worry about total universal collapse just yet. Actually, this isn't really existential dread, it's more of a confirmation of a process we all knew was happening. The fact that it's not going to happen for another four billion years means that we don't really have to worry about death from universal collapse, just every other crisis we're facing. Number 13. Cold Welding on Earth, there are certain ways we do things. We are, after all, a species of habit, and we like to just keep things the same. When it comes to science, it's not even a choice. Physics and chemistry are unchanging constants, but that doesn't mean space works in the same way. In fact, it almost certainly doesn't. When we want to melt two pieces of metal together, we have to apply heat until the metals reach their melting points. But that's not how it works when you're in space. In space, no heat or other outside force is required to make two metal bits stick together. It's a process called cold welding, and it happens when moving metal parts rub against each other, grinding away the protective oxide layer that would otherwise prevent them from fusing together. In space, however, that protection isn't there at all. The electrons flow from one piece of metal into the other, making them one science. So again, while there are certain rules to physics and chemistry here on Earth, space is a whole other thing. They do things very differently out there. But hey, at least you know that you don't have to take your toolbox out in space, right? Bob the Builder will be happy about that. I hear he really hates having to carry his tools everywhere. Number 12. The Uranus Tilt If ever you need to make something appear slightly off or wrong, one of the best ways to do it is to tilt the item in question. It works fantastically when you apply it to, say, paintings or photos, but what about entire planets? Excellent question. A planet being tilted on its side is not an unusual occurrence. It's actually a very common thing. In fact, Earth is tilted 23 degrees on its axis, which allows us to experience seasons throughout the year. We enjoy summer when our part of the world leans towards the sun, and we appreciate winter when it's farther from it. Uranus, on the other hand, is tilted at an extreme 98 degree angle. That has a pretty notable effect on its seasons, obviously. On Uranus, a single season takes 21 years. Seriously. See how long you enjoy summer when it never ends. Obviously, Uranus is a very unusual place. And yes, I know what I said, I meant it both ways. But this just goes to show the curious world we live in. A single planet living through a 21-year summer sounds like Earth after the climate disaster. Number 11. The Mars Valley there's a heck of a lot that we don't know about Mars, and for once, I'm not talking about the potential for alien life, although that is true. I'm talking more about the planet as a whole. We don't really know anything, but what we do know is pretty fascinating. Well, it's fascinating if you're a big fan of the Grand Canyon. Valles Marineris, the largest canyon in the solar system, spreads substantially across the face of Mars, spanning more than 1,800. 
864 miles, towering as much as 372 miles high, and plunging as much as 5 miles deep, it is a vast place that dwarfs earthly canyons such as Arizona's Grand Canyon. For comparison, the Grand Canyon is nearly 498 miles long, 18.6 miles across, and 1.1 miles deep. The origins of the Valles Marineris remain unknown. One popular theory is that it was created by a crack billions of years ago when the planet cooled. Heck of a crack. While there's still a lot that needs to be discovered and worked out, it's easy to see why so many people want to visit Mars. Bigger than the Grand Canyon, people love the Grand Canyon. This thing is a tourist board's biggest dream. No wonder Elon wants to colonize the place. That sentence made me queasy. Number 10. Neptune's Heat Space is full of paradoxes, the things you would typically expect, guess again my friends, and nowhere is there a bigger paradox than Neptune. Honestly, just the whole planet is kind of the opposite of what you'd expect. Let's dig into it a little more, shall we? Neptune is more than 2.8 billion miles away from the sun. With a distance like that, you'd probably expect it to be cold, dark, maybe a little rainy. Nope. While it is perpetual, Actually dark, Neptune seems to be producing its own heat. In fact, the planet produces about 2.6 times more heat than it receives from the Sun. Researchers believe this is caused by pressure near the planet's core, which builds and releases hydrogen. That said, Neptune's core is a blistering 9,300 degrees Fahrenheit, but its atmosphere, minus 361 degrees. Try and make sense of that. As I said, this is a pure paradox. A planet that should be freezing cold is scorching hot, unless you're lingering in its atmosphere. It almost doesn't make sense. But hey, that's life in space for ya. It defies any and all logic. Well, uh, unless you have a PhD in astrophysics, in which case, it probably makes a lot of sense. Number 9. Saturn's Hexagonal Storm if you ask people to tell you a fact about Saturn, I feel confident in saying you'll get a lot of people talking about the ring around it. Well, that's all well and good, but there's a lot more to Saturn than its belt. It also has a pretty ferocious temperature, or to put it another way, it has a pretty consistent storm system in place. Maybe it's a burglar alarm. Saturn's hexagon is a massive, persistent cloud pattern around the north pole of the planet, named because it, uh, well, it's a hexagon, a big one. The hexagon's sides are about 9,000 miles long, approximately 1,200 miles longer than the Earth's diameter. It's estimated to be a little over 18,000 miles wide, 190 miles high, and may actually be a fast-moving jet stream made up of atmospheric gases. So, yeah, I guess you could argue that it's kind of a burglar alarm, protecting the planet from unwelcome visitors. Or you could just argue that it's a naturally cloudy part of the solar system. Either way, it's probably not going to be good for any potential visitors, unless they love clouds, in which case, it would probably be a great honor to die beneath such a curious system. Number 8. Sparkly Stars Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I would like to drive my car. That's the version of the song I always sing to my nephew, who usually tries to take the wheel whenever he sees a police car. It's not helpful and we should probably be concerned, but that's a problem for another time. Uh, for now, let's continue with the theme and discover why stars twinkle, but other celestial bodies don't. There are reasons why stars twinkle and planets don't, and it has nothing to do with their personalities. You would not see stars twinkling if you were outside the Earth's atmosphere, aka in space. 
the twinkle of a star is created when light emitted from that star hits our atmosphere and skitters off in a zigzag. To our eyes, it appears as a noticeable twinkle in the sky. Planets appear much larger to us than points of light. So even though their light reacts in the same way when it hits our atmosphere, those motions eventually cancel each other out, meaning we only see a steady glow. So, yeah, the song is accurate. Stars do twinkle, but they also don't. Like everything we see in the sky, from rainbows to double suns, it's basically an optical illusion conjured up by the atmosphere. Man, science just sucks the fun out of everything, doesn't it? Number 7. Mercury's Paradox for years, scientists have warned that we're likely to see an increase in unexpected climate shifts, temperatures veering from one thing to another, but are we the only planet in the solar system to suffer from these wild climate swings? Turns out the answer is now. A few places on Earth experience extreme temperature fluctuations, and we have climate change to thank for that little gift, but Earth's wild climates have nothing on Mercury. Mercury. The temperature on Mercury can vary to extremes of over a thousand degrees in a single day. It's not uncommon to start out at minus 28 degrees Fahrenheit and end up at 800 degrees Fahrenheit within a matter of hours. And this wild temperature is from the smallest planet in the galaxy. NASA has since determined that Mercury has the most extreme temperature range of any other planet in the solar system. How fun for them! Okay, so in hindsight, Earth's temperature fluctuations don't look quite as intense, but that doesn't mean they're not a problem. In fact, we know they're a problem. They may not be a thousand degree issue, but the effects will still be the same long term. Who knows, within a few thousand years, Earth could be just like Mercury. Number 6. Sand and Stars it's often said that the stars in the universe outnumber all the grains of sand on every beach, desert, and sandbox on Earth. And I mean, Earth is composed of a lot of sand, so just imagine that for a second. That's a lot of stuff to try and calculate. In fact, how do you even measure that? Let's find out. Scientists make estimates of the number of sand grains by measuring the average size of the particles and then calculating how many particles it would take to fill something like a gallon jug, and then calculating how many particles it would take to fill something like a gallon jug. Using the latest geological studies and estimates of land area, they calculate the total volume of sand on Earth, which is, by the way, a lot. Current estimates suggest there's about 7.5 sextillion sand grains on Earth. Astronomers, meanwhile, estimate the total number of stars in the universe by studying nearby visible galaxies, ones from which we can count the stars. They then combine this with conservative estimates of how many stars aren't visible, eventually coming to a final number. Our universe contains at least 70 septillion stars. So yeah, without a doubt, there are a lot more stars than grains of sand. And there are people who actually get paid to find this stuff out. The more you know. Number 5. NASA Spacesuit NASA has invested over $200 million in spacesuit development since 2009, but the agency still doesn't have a new fleet of spacesuits. Is this a problem? Well, that's for them to say. But I would argue that a lack of spacesuits is certainly a problem when your whole job is, uh, you know, space. A spacesuit built in 1974 costs between 15 million and 20 million dollars. That would be about 150 million dollars today. And it's actually worse today because NASA are actively running out of spacesuits. According to sources, they're now down to about four flight-ready EVA suits. 
and the problem is they're not easy to make. After all, they're not like uniforms or work clothes. They're basically human-shaped spacecrafts. A spacesuit must be built to protect an astronaut from any and all of the many dangers encountered in space. That includes radiation, particles that can be traveling at up to 20,000 miles per hour, and a heck of a lot of trouble. But they also have to be built to provide oxygen, communications, and anything else the astronaut will need to survive. So, yeah, they're not cheap. NASA is smart enough to find a solution to the problem in some way, but they should probably prioritize it sooner, rather than later. Everybody knows that space travel is likely the future, so you might want to get on that quickly before Elon Musk gets on it, you know? Number 4. The Sun's Mass How heavy is your sun? Sorry, that sounded a little misleading. Uh, how heavy is the sun? That's a bit better. And before any wise guys in Europe speak up, not the newspaper. The actual giant burning hot ball of flames that we call our central star. According to scientists, the sun's mass is approximately, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this number. Well, uh, it has 15 zeros. Let's put it that way. According to our calculations, it's about the same weight as around 330,000 Earths. So, yeah, it's not exactly what we'd call light. In fact, if you were to really look at the data, you'd see that the sun apparently makes up around 99.86% of our solar system's mass. Which isn't surprising, given how heavy it is. So heavy I can't even figure out the right word to describe it. According to Google, 15 zeros makes up a quadrillion, so the sun is literally a quadrillion, uh, something. Uh, look, I'll level with you guys. The calculations and units of measurement are very confusing. Turns out you can't just put the sun on a pair of kitchen scales. So just take my word for it. It's very, very heavy. Number three, blue sunset. We've already delved into just how different Mars is from our own planet, but now we're gonna reveal something that is either cool or pretty weird, depending on your point of view. I'm talking about the sky and the sun of Mars. Beautiful, right? The sky on Mars is red, something we already knew, but its sunsets are blue. The light from the sun scatters based on whatever is in the atmosphere. The light from the sun comprises many different wavelengths, and molecules and dust may only interact with certain waves, presenting us with a specific color. So on Earth, blue light bounces off the air molecules, which gives our sky its very blue appearance. On Mars, however, the atmosphere is made of carbon dioxide and is filled with dust. That dust scatters red light, making the sky I appear red. The light has a longer distance to travel at sunset, so it scatters more. On Earth, that leaves us red, and on Mars, it leaves blue. And that, my friends, is your science lesson for today. How the sky works? Now someday it's possible that we'll be able to travel to Mars and witness the sunset for ourselves. Well, you will. I'll pass, thank you. Number two. A day on Venus. Sometimes it feels like the years just go by so slowly, doesn't it? It takes forever just to get through 365 days. Well, if you think that's long, just imagine what it must be like to live on Venus. Ugh. Venus is often known as Earth's sister planet because the two share things in common. They're both within the sun's habitable zone. They're both terrestrial planets. There are a lot of similarities here, but they also have very noticeable differences. Here on Earth, the time it takes for the sun to rise, set, and return to the same place is 24 hours. That's a complete day for us. Well, not on Venus. Over there, a slow rotation and orbit mean a single day can last as long as 116.75 Earth days. That's a very, very long night. 
the idea of somehow having to make it through 2,800 hours before the day was over feels like a pretty brutal experience. I'm not sure I could really make my way through that. So in hindsight, we're all pretty damn lucky that we don't have to. Our Earth planet is… well, it's perfect for us. Please lord, we don't need longer days. Number 1. Space Junk For some people, the idea of working for the Department of Defense's Global Space Surveillance Network probably sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds like the kind of department keeping an eye out for extraterrestrial life, but if you got that job, you'd be in for a real shock. In fact, the department tends to focus more on the over 27,000 pieces of orbital debris floating around in space. This space junk travels through the near-Earth space environment at extremely high speeds, approximately 1,500 miles per hour, so even the slightest impact of a tiny piece of debris could cause untold chaos on a planned space mission, and sadly that number is only rising ever higher. There's more space junk out there than ever before, meaning vessels like the International Space Station and SpaceX's Crew Dragon are in grave danger. Of course, what the department does is incredibly important. But yes, if you get a job there thinking that you're going to be tracking aliens, you're going to be extremely disappointed, unless you're a dumpster diver with a love of space. In that case, it's probably going to be as close to your dream job as you could possibly get. Which of these space facts blew your mind the most? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!